Hello guys, uh, I'm Evgeny Mordochovich working here with Buffalo Drive Training and uh, as we promised uh, one of the sessions for how to become an owner operator, we will bring guest speakers and I brought here Daryl, he is also instructor at the school and also owner operator at his own company and we want to ask him a couple of questions and give him opportunity to introduce himself and tell some stories. Okay. Go ahead. Sounds good, yeah. Like Evgeny says, owner-operator, uh, had a truck, uh, my own authority for almost 10 years, been different contracts, doing different work all uh, all over the place. So, yeah, we give you guys, try to give you guys some advice who want to get started in the owner-operator industry because it's a different, a little bit different than being a company driver. So uh, things to look for, things to watch out for as you're going along. Then I'll start asking you questions. How many years do you have a license? Uh, 27. 27 class one license yeah. and for 10 years you had your company or yeah and how many years you've been uh, you've been in the army yeah? i was in the army for 10. for 10 years yeah. also the first question will be oh, to do or what not to do when you're doing first steps what to watch for what rabbit holes you already stepped yeah yourself. For, for sure important question guys when you're out there getting started make sure you know what business you want to go into if you want to do long haul short haul haul aggregate it's very important to research what block of business you want to start off into like if depending on what block of business you go into that's going to depend on what kind of truck you're going to buy and how you're going to spec your truck a gravel truck is a lot different than a highway truck a lot of opportunities in all all fields getting started on the highway um, you're looking for a certain type of highway truck it's going to get great fuel mileage the biggest cost as owner operators are fuel mileage other than our uh, licensing and a uh, bit of insurance but number one cost is fuel so if we can keep the fuel in our fuel tanks that's uh, one of the best ways to start making money i'm saying about the factor for the uh, choosing the truck is the fuel mileage no not the maintenance cost well, maintenance cost goes up and down depending if you get lucky on your truck but number one cost i'd say is fuel difference between eight miles per gallon and a six mile per gallon truck could be almost thirty thousand dollars in your pocket a year right so that's a lot of extra maintenance if you wanted to tell your story what what are you planning to do you you're going yes. right now for for half a year a leave of absence to do something in the trucking how are you going to do it what you do yeah so for myself personally right now, I'm going to uh, take a leave of absence from the school. I still have a truck from before. It's an older truck. I personally like the older trucks. I find maintenance a lot easier to do on the older trucks and I do a lot of maintenance myself. What is the truck? 98 Western Star. 98 Western yeah. Star. Pre-e-log. Okay. <laughs> what you will make, what you will haul, how you will make money with that Western Star. Yeah. So trucking fuel rates are almost the same. Doesn't matter if you have a brand new truck that's $250,000 or a $20,000 truck. As long as you can maintain the truck and keep it going down the road, the money is the same. So for me, you buy a older used truck to get started, you work it for a year, build up the bank account, you wanna buy something newer or nicer, that's when you do it. Don't get over your head with big bank accounts and all the money to the bank. There is all the trucks like yours, 98, there is all the trucks like we're using in the school, and yeah. we're still buying it, but depends what what job you're going to do. Yeah. If you're going a long haul and stuck somewhere there, like it doesn't matter, 30,000, you can <laughs> leave 30,000 in some shop. That's right, very true. Yeah, so for me, what I'm going to do is I have an opportunity to haul uh, some scrap cars right now. I'm going to haul cars out of Ontario to uh, Manitoba, roughly around a 300 kilometer trip one way, 300 kilometer trip back, and uh, be pulling two trailers, so Super Bs. They're gonna be crushed. I'll have to net them, I'll have to tarp them, I'll have to chain them down. But uh, my end of, uh, for that operation, I could look at about 14 or $1,500 a load. At uh, 600 kilometers, I'll burn 50 liters per 100, so that's 300 liters. At $1.65 a liter, about $465 for fuel cost. My insurance and everything will be probably 40, 50 bucks a day. So I could make a thousand dollars a day doing that load mm -hmm. on a ten or eleven hour day. Six hundred kilometers, not everything going to be hundred kilometers per hour, but uh, how many hours you at the I loading think, station, at the unloading I, station? I think I'll be working about twelve hour day to do that. When you're saying like this, thousand bucks you can net is 
sound very good. It does sound you know, very good, yeah. Everyone should do that. Everyone should do it, but guess what? The truck's going to break. You're going to have problems. You're going to have flat tires. You're going to have all kinds of headaches. Is the load ready for you every day? Probably not every day, right? So there's a lot of hiccups. Trucking is ups and downs. So it's all about a balance, right? So you have to make sure that you plan ahead, line things up. That's part of uh, being a good owner-operator is having things planned ahead. I know that if I can't haul a load for him, possibly for a load of cars out of that guy, I know there's a, another load somewhere along the way where I can pick up a load to fill a day or two of work. Won't pay as much, but you can keep the wheels turning. In average, we can't say that you're making 30,000. A month? Oh, no. <laughs> In a dream world. <laughs> In a dream world. <laughs> yeah. Then you're making decent living, but it's still a business you're risking. It's still a business. Still at risk, yeah. You can break down so you're going to sit a month without a job. That's right. Could be a possibility, right? So those are all things you have to think about. And when you first get started, you have to earmark part of your money, put it aside. You can't just spend all the money you make. You must put it aside for breakdowns, rainy day funds, right? That's that's part of so doing smart business. Changing tires is like seven grand. Yeah, changing tires Nowadays. is very expensive. Another good thing, if you guys want to learn something, if you're getting started, learn how to do your own maintenance. Learn how to fix your own stuff. Take some time. Spend some time learning about your truck. Go inside and out. I can change my tires on my truck if I have to. I can fix a lot of things if I have to. On the side of the road, that's what saves me headaches and problems. If I break down, Good chances are pretty good with an older truck. I can fix it myself and get myself down the road to keep my savings down and keep my downtime down. Sometimes you bring a sh- truck to a shop, two, three days to get it in the shop, two, three days to get it fixed, two, three days to get it back. You're down now a week and a half to fix something simple that if you could you learn how to fix some of the stuff yourself, you could take care of. Also per hour, yeah, like the you know, shop rates. shops. Mm, dealership 170, shop 120, 100 per hour. There is no cheap rates. There's no $90 shops anymore or 45. When I first started, it was $35 an hour you could bring a truck to. Now it's 125, 145. If you're working for someone, you're making 30 bucks per hour, but <laughs> yeah. you're, That's right. you're paying 100 bucks per hour to, to repair yourself. Absolutely, yeah. Plus, there is the cost of yeah doing a business, yeah. And there, yeah, the upfront cost on business is, is big too. You, to get your own running authority, they call it. It's basically your insurance, your cargo insurance. It all has to get done way ahead of time. You have to have safety on all your equipment. That all costs money as well. Or Auto Pack or MPI in Manitoba here. Once you own a truck and you have your safety on the truck, basically get your own license plate for the truck. And once you have that, then you have to get a safety certificate, which I believe now is a 10-day course to do that, or five-day course at Manitoba Trucking Association. Once you have that in place, then you can start, uh, then you're a truck for hire, basically. Then you can go broker loads on your own, on your own name. Instead of leasing your truck onto a company, you now have the ability to make phone calls and find loads, go on load boards, do everything on your own. You're not working through anyone you're just working for yourself there's no one taking a percentage oh you started right away broken yourself or? when i first started i was leased on to a company for the first three years and because of the age of my equipment they gave me one year leeway they said at the end of this year we will no longer insure your vehicle you're on your own so it took me six months to get myself established to be able to get myself find out what to do properly the right channels to go through to get my insurance. So you're going to need insurance through MPI, and then you'll need a third-party insurance for the truck, the, possibly the trailer, the cargo, where you're hauling, whatever region you're running in. And that all takes a bit of time and a bit of money. So those are your costs that you also have up front. What else you think? Worst to say to them? When you're getting started, when you first get your license, drive for... Uh, Drive for a bit, get get a handle on it, get out there, see the road, see what it's all about, see what segment of business you like. And once you once you realize you want to own that truck and you want to be the boss, you want to have your own thing, get your business set up. You'll have to set up a business. You have to have a you don't have to be a corporation, but you'll have to set up a business. Get a GST number to report uh, earnings and taxes. Once you have that set up, start looking for your truck. And then once you have your truck. 
and you start to pinpoint exactly what you want to do for work. I know everybody says there's a shortage or ups and downs along the market, but I think once you have a truck, you can always almost always find work for it. Look, uh, one more piece of advice I can give you guys. Once you get out there, build relations with everywhere you go. Even when you're a company driver, get to know the guys on the docks where you're hauling. Get to know the shippers. Because once you go on your own, that's a guy you know who might pick up the phone and say, hey, you have any loads? And he might be like, yeah, my regular guys can't show up today. Maybe you can fill the spot, right? So build relationships, you know, don't burn any bridges. You know, keep keep yourself out there. Uh, look for niches in the markets, spots where you could fill a hole maybe. Maybe one or two times you got to halt freight that isn't paying the best, but the next time you haul it, you know, maybe it's going to a better spot or something like that where you can find a little bit of a different way to make a few more dollars at it. Nobody wants to do it because of the area it goes to, but you're willing to do it, right? Don't expect to find the the perfect loads every single time. Do You got to do the hard work. That's the bottom line. Trucking's a, a tough business. You got to work hard at it. You got to put in a lot of hours, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. But if you, if you, know, if you go hard at it and you do it right, you can make a good go out of it. There's a lot of opportunity out there. Well, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> that's how you find your uh, loads and how you establish yourself. But you're 27 years, you already have a license. I'm 17 years. Uh, for my sense, so. But I'm sure you got the same build business relationships along the way. I didn't look for lots yet. Uh, I'm not owning the trucking company. I'm in trucking school. <laughs> okay. But relationship with trucking companies, that's what I'm building. And if I'll help right now, guys, to already got a license to start with, buy the first truck and open the company. And, and next I'm going to have bunch of companies absolutely same happened with this punjabi community some hate them some like them but they they capture the business yeah and some pretty successful are yeah. they always doing the right way the job who yeah. knows know. some succeeding some probably are losing the pants but some doing pretty good yeah. and if you can help with this wave of different european guys and that's good it's a good spot to be in there's lots of opportunity right so it's just i'm from israel so guys yeah. from israel come i'm speaking the languages next time probably we'll call the guys um that own a company with like 12 15 drivers it's a different approach Absolutely. different stories they can tell you've been working for yourself establishing your name your network of loads and connections yeah. and they say if you're gonna have one truck run one truck if you're gonna have more than one make sure there's always an odds don't have two have three don't what? Have, i don't know if that's what they say i had two trucks and it was not good with having a second truck hard to find drivers hard to keep people happy but the minute you have that third truck everything balances that's what they say well, i've had five trucks there you go five <laughs> that's the way to do it <laughs> i still give up and <laughs> no i never tried by myself i still i've been putting all these trucks in the company yeah and it's always a triangle relationship that i been pissed off between employee and a dispatcher broker or whatever that's the problem you gotta eliminate that because they take a percentage and that's sometimes and that's all, all, that's all always percentage. pissed off with you always yeah. that, uh, so the only one you get to be mad at when you're doing it yourself is yourself maybe you bid on a shit load or ter pardon, a terrible load and you shouldn't have done it and it's it is what it is so now you're hauling loads for free but next time you learn a lesson next time you'll bid higher if people want to move the freight, they're going to pay you what you want almost. No, now market is slow. There's still stuff to find. There's still freight to move. It's a long journey, but it's a, it's a rewarding journey. So do the hard work, you know, stay safe out there, you know, but get after it. If you want to do it, it's a great way to start a business in Canada and, uh, you know, run your own company, I think. Me too. Like, unless why are you coming here? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just yeah. work for someone. <laughs>